Gospel of Barnabas Barnabas sent Omar Khayyam the Gospel of Jesus Christ, a brand new prophet that God had sent to the world. The great and wonderful God has visited us through His prophet, Jesus Christ, in the great mercy of teaching and miracles. Still, Satan is deceiving many and preaching the most impious doctrine. Paul has also been deceived and is writing this to save you. The angel Gabriel visited the Virgin Mary concerning the birth of Jesus. He saluted her, saying, God be with you, O Mary, and comforted her, saying, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. The virgin answered that she knew not a man, but that God would make a man without a man. The angel told her to have a child and keep him away from wine, strong drinks, and unclean meat. When the angel left the virgin, she praised God and declared that because of how great God had made her and how he had broken down her heart's pride, all people would call her blessed. The angel Gabriel warned Joseph about the conception of the Virgin Mary. Mary chose a companion of her lineage, a man called Joseph, of blameless life, and revealed the divine counsel to him. The angel of God rebuked Joseph while he slept, gave thanks to God, and abode with Mary all his life, serving God with all sincerity. Mary gave birth to a son, whom he named Jesus, and he was to be a prophet of God sent to the people of Israel. Joseph went to Bethlehem with Mary, his wife and great-granddaughter, to be enrolled according to the decree of Caesar. While Joseph abode there, Mary gave birth to her son without pain, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger because there was no room in the inn. The shepherds were watching over their flock when an exceedingly bright light surrounded them, and an angel of the Lord comforted them, saying that a child was born in the city of David who would bring great salvation to the house of Israel. The shepherds returned to their flock, announcing to everyone the great thing they had seen, and the whole hill country of Judea was filled with fear. When the eight days were fulfilled, they took the child to the temple to circumcise him and gave him the name Jesus. Mary and Joseph feared God and kept the child in fear. Three magi from the east came to Judea to worship the new king manifested by his star, and when Herod heard this, he was scared, and all the city was troubled. The priests and scribes answered that Christ should be born in Bethlehem. The Magi visited Jesus in Bethlehem and presented him with spices, silver, and gold, recounting all they had seen to the Virgin. The child warned them not to go to Herod while they were sleeping. Herod believed himself mocked by the Magi and sent his soldiers to slay all the newborn children in Bethlehem. The soldiers killed all the children, and the prophet's words were fulfilled. Jesus, having returned to Judea, held a wondrous dispute with doctors, and when Herod was dead, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Return to Judea, for they are dead that willed the death of the child. Jesus, having come to the age of thirty, went up to Mount Olives with his mother to gather olives. He was surrounded by an exceedingly bright light and an infinite multitude of angels saying, Blessed be God. Jesus, having received the vision, told his mother that he would suffer great persecution for the honor of God and would no longer abide with her to serve her. A leper prayed to Jesus, son of David, to have mercy on him, but Jesus reproved him, saying that he should pray to God, who created him, and he would give him health. Jesus, sighing, touched the sick man with his hands in the name of God, and the leprosy was cleansed, and the flesh of the sick man was left to him like that of a child. The leper cried out, saying, Behold the prophet! Jesus' first sermon to the people was terrific in its doctrine concerning the name of God. His words moved the whole city of Jerusalem, and he ran to the temple to see Jesus. Jesus ascended to the place where the scribes were wont to speak and opened his mouth, saying, Blessed be the holy name of God, who created all things to glorify himself, who sent his Son for the salvation of the world, and who punished and reprobate Satan and his followers. God delivered his servants from every evil and gave them this land as he promised Abraham and his son forever. He then gave us his holy law, Satan should not deceive us. Jesus rebuked the people for forgetting the word of God, the priests for their negligence in God's service and their worldly greed, the scribes for their vain doctrine, and the doctors for making the law of God of no effect through their traditions. Jesus prayed to the Lord God and descended from the temple, and the priests spoke evil of him among themselves. Jesus ascended the Mount of Olives to pray and after passing the whole night in prayer, he said, Lord, I know that the scribes hate me, and the priests are minded to kill me, thy servant. The angel Gabriel comforted him, saying, Fear not, O Jesus. 
Abraham offered a sheep as a sacrifice to God in place of his only begotten son Ishmael because the knife could not cut his son. Jesus answered that he would do the same but had no money. Jesus fasted forty days and forty nights, making continual supplication to the Lord for the salvation of his people. After forty days passed, he hungered, and Satan appeared to him, but Jesus drove him away by the power of the words of God. Jesus chose twelve apostles, including Judas Iscariot, who was slain on the cross. He always revealed divine secrets to these apostles, but Judas Iscariot stole the tenth part of everything. Jesus turned water into wine at a marriage where the wine ran out. His mother commanded the servants to give the wine to the guests, but the master of ceremonies rebuked them for keeping the better wine until now. The master of ceremonies thought that the servants were drunk, but those sitting near Jesus believed in him and praised God. Jesus taught his apostles about conversion from the evil life and how to become new men by containing the new doctrine that would come out of his mouth. No man can serve two masters at enmity, one with the other. Therefore, serve God and despise the world, you will find rest for your souls. The pilgrim does not burden himself with palaces, fields, and other earthly matters on the way but bears things that are light and prized for their usefulness and convenience. In this chapter, Christians' unbelief is perceived, and the true faith of Mammon is revealed. Jesus answered that God is good, a being, and a life, and He alone has no equal. He hath no father, mother, sons, brethren, or companions, and He abideth eternally without human similitude, for He is incorporeal, uncompounded, immaterial, of the most simple substance. Jesus said that the scribes and doctors had made the law of God void with their false prophecies and that God was wrathful with the house of Israel and this faithless generation. God created everything, including birds, and will not abandon you while caring for the birds. When Jesus said this, Peter asked what would become of him, and Jesus answered that he would sit beside him on the day of judgment, giving testimony against the twelve tribes of Israel. The disciples were sorely grieved at this word, but Jesus comforted them and said his prayers. Jesus called the lepers near him and said God would heal them. The lepers cried out for health, and Jesus answered that they should go and show themselves to the priests according to the law of God. The lepers departed and were cleansed on the way, and one of them returned to find Jesus, bowed himself, revered him, and prayed that he would receive him as a servant. Jesus answered, Ten have been cleansed, where are the nine? Jesus went to the Sea of Galilee and sailed to his city of Nazareth. After that, a great storm awoke him. He arose and said, O Elohim Sabaoth, have mercy upon thy servants. The wind ceased, and the sea became calm. The seamen spread all that Jesus had wrought through the city, and the scribes and doctors presented themselves to him. Jesus answered that no prophet is received in his own country, walked through their midst, and departed from them. Jesus went up to Capernaum, and as he drew near the city, he beheld a man possessed by a demon, and he did great harm to the man. The demons cried out through his mouth, and the disciples prayed Jesus would depart, but Jesus said it was necessary for the devil to leave, not me. The city's men came forth and found Jesus and the healed man. They were filled with fear and prayed to Jesus that he would depart from their borders, but Jesus did not answer their prayer because they were of the uncircumcised people. The woman said that the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's tables, and Jesus said that her daughter was freed because of her faith. The woman's kinsfolk joined the law of God. The disciples were sorrowful for Jesus that day, and he answered that a dog is better than an uncircumcised man. They were sorrowful, but they considered what a dog does for his master and found his saying true. Jesus answered that God commanded Abraham to circumcise his foreskin and that it was a covenant between God and Abraham. Jesus said that Adam's flesh rebelled against the Spirit after eating the forbidden food in paradise. The angel Gabriel reprimanded him for swearing to cut off his flesh. God told Abraham the facts concerning circumcision and made a covenant with him, saying that the soul that shall not have his flesh circumcised, I will scatter him from among my people forever. The disciples trembled with fear at these words of Jesus, for with vehemence of spirit he spoke. Jesus said that those who had not circumcised their foreskin were deprived of paradise and that those who hated their soul in this world would keep it in life eternal. A man should not leave off pleasing God to satisfy one of his enemies. All the saints and prophets went to their deaths to serve God. Elijah and Elisha, who did not fear disregarding the flesh, were feared with great terror by the king and princes. If you gaze at the graves, 
you will know the meat. A rich glutton held a splendid feast, it is seen how improper laughter is among men. The disciples laughed over the older man's older man. Jesus reproved them, saying they had forgotten the prophet's words. Abraham's father wanted to burn his son, so he went with him to the temple and gave a present to his God, the great ball. When the crowd increased, Abraham hid himself behind an idol, and his father did not stay to seek him. Abraham took the axe and cut off the feet of all the idols except the great god Baal. When the priests closed the temple and left, ten thousand men ran to Abraham and questioned why he had destroyed their gods. Abraham answered that God had slain their gods and that he would not slay God. The father of Abraham cried out that his son had killed their gods, and the men put Abraham on a pile of wood and put fire underneath, but God commanded the fire not to burn Abraham. Philip asked Jesus how Abraham came to know God. Jesus answered that Abraham feared going into his father's house, so he removed himself some distance from the home and sat under a palm tree, where he said there must be a God who has more life and power than man. Abraham was afraid when the angel Gabriel appeared to him, but the angel comforted him and told him to go to the fount and wash himself, for God wished to speak with him. Abraham went to the mountain, sat on his knees, and heard himself call. Filled with fear, Abraham bent his face to the earth, saying, how shall your dust and ashes serve and hearken to you? Then God said, Fear not, but rise, for I have chosen you as my servant, and I will bless you and make you increase into a great person. Jesus went to Jerusalem, near Sophia, for the feast of our nation. A doctor asked him what he must do to have eternal life, and Jesus answered, Love the Lord, your God, and your neighbor. Jesus answered that a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when robbers, wounded and stripped, seized him. A priest and a Levite passed by without saying a word, but a Samaritan stopped and helped the man. Jesus gave the sick man into the charge of the host and said, Take care of this man, and I will pay you all. The doctor answered that the neighbor who showed mercy was the right one. Jesus asked the priests if it was lawful to pay tribute to Caesar. The priests answered that it was, and Jesus said to them to provide that which was Caesar's to Caesar and that which was God's to God. Jesus marveled at the man's faith and told him to go in peace because God had granted health to his son. The man believed in God and broke into pieces all his gods, saying there is only one God, the true and living God. The sons make vows with that little money with which they ought to support their fathers and cry out, This money is consecrated to God, whereby the fathers suffer. The scribes and doctors lay upon the shoulders of others weights of unbearable weight, but they are unwilling to move them with one of their fingers. God laments that his people have annulled his law and followed the traditions of their elders. Jesus answered that disobedience would not enter the man but come out of him, from his heart. One of the doctors asked Jesus if he had spoken against idolatry, but Jesus answered that Israel today had statues of flesh. The scribes were wroth, but Jesus said they were to love the Lord, their God. Jesus said that the fornicator, the glutton, and the drunkard have their flesh as their God, as do all the other sinners. Joshua and the tribe of Levi killed 120,000 idolaters after they had made the calf. One had his right hand shrunken so that he could not use it. Jesus stretched his hand and said it was better to burn a city than leave an evil custom. Jesus said to sit in the meanest place when invited, and the host will tell you, Arise and sit lower down, and you will have great honor. Satan became reprobate for his pride, and the prophet Isaiah criticized him for his fall from heaven. If a man knew his miseries, he would always weep here on earth and account himself most mean, beyond everything else. The first man and his wife wept for a hundred years without ceasing, craving the mercy of God. Jesus departed from Jerusalem and went to the desert beyond Jordan. There, his disciples asked him how Satan fell through pride, and Jesus answered that Satan fell through pride because he instigated the angels to forsake God. The followers of Satan repented of having done God any reverence and left him. But Satan spat up some earth, which the angel Gabriel lifted, and made man have the navel in his belly. The disciples were amazed at the rebellion of the angels. Jesus said that he who makes no prayers more wicked than Satan and shall suffer greater torments because Satan had no example of fearing God before his fall. Make prayer unceasing, O my disciples, so that you may receive. Don't speak too much during your prayer because God examines the heart and hypocrites frequently offer prayers in public places throughout the city in the hopes that many people will hold them for saints. Very few make true prayers, and therefore Satan has power over them.
God will not honor those who honor him with their lips, but his heart is far from them. The disciples wept at the words of Jesus and besought him to teach them how to pray. Jesus answered that they should pray as if the Roman governor were about to put them to death. Jesus said it was necessary to observe the law of God and that all the water of the sea will not wash away the iniquities of him who, with his heart, loves iniquities. No one will make prayer pleasing to God if he is not washed, but he will burden his soul with sin like idolatry. If a man makes prayer to God as is fitting, he will obtain all that he should ask. Jesus answered that man sinned through pride when he trampled on the earth that had been cleansed by the angel Gabriel and that God gave his soul to man when Adam saw a writing in the air that said, There is only one God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Adam opened his mouth and asked God what the message of the words Muhammad is the messenger of God meant. God told him that he was the first man he had created and that Muhammad was his son. Adam besought God for writing on his hands, and God gave him a report that said, there is only one God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. God saw the man alone, so he made him sleep and took a rib from near his heart, filling the place with flesh. He gave Eve to Adam as his wife, and they became lords of paradise. When Satan heard that God had cast him out of paradise, he became angry and drew near heaven's gate, where a horrid serpent stood on guard. Satan told the snake that he would enter his belly and place himself near Eve and Adam. Satan told Eve to eat the fruit, and when her husband awoke, he took and ate the fruit, but as the food went down her throat, he remembered God's words and put his hand into his throat, where every man has the mark. Adam and Eve were ashamed to present themselves before God because they were naked, so they made clothing out of fig leaves. God asked Adam if he had eaten the fruit. Adam listened to his wife and ate the fruit, so God cursed the earth and said Adam would have to eat brambles and thorns and bear children with travail. Eve would also have to abide under the dominion of man. God called the angel Michael, who held the sword of God, and told him to drive the serpent from paradise and cut off his legs. He then called Satan, who came laughing and said he would be satiated with uncleanness. The angel Michael expelled Adam and Eve from paradise, and Adam broke down in tears when he saw Muhammad's name written above the gate. Satan and Adam sinned through pride. The disciples wept after this discourse and Jesus wept when they saw many who came to find him because the chiefs of the priests took counsel among themselves to catch him in his talk. Jesus answered that the miracles he performed showed that he spoke the words of God and that he was not worthy to unloose the ties of the hosen of the messenger of God, whom you call Messiah. Jesus went to Mount Tabor, where Moses and Elijah appeared and spoke with him. Peter proposed building three tabernacles, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and the other for Elijah, and they were covered with white. White and heard a voice saying, Behold my servant, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus went down to the eight disciples awaiting him below, and the four narrated to the eight all that they had seen. The eight believed, save Judas Iscariot, who thought nothing. James asked Jesus whose son David was in of what lineage. Jesus answered that David was the son of Isaac. The disciples said the promise was made to Isaac, but Jesus answered that Moses did not write it, nor Joshua but rather our rabbis, who do not fear God. Consider the words of the angel Gabriel. God told Abraham to sacrifice his son Ishmael, but the disciples asked Jesus if Isaac was the firstborn. Jesus answered that Satan always seeks to annul the laws of God and that hypocrites and evildoers have contaminated almost everything. Muhammad saw Jesus and reverenced him, saying that through his spirit, God gave prophecy. Jesus asked Muhammad to let him untie his shoe latchet and thanked God. God is unstable, so he never stays in one place. The hypocrite is a robber and commits sacrilege because he uses the law to appear suitable and steals the honor of God. The hypocrite has no faith, and if he believed that God saw all and would punish wickedness with terrible judgment, he would purify his heart, but because he has no religion, he keeps it full of iniquity. Therefore, if you are priests and doctors and do all for gain, I speak against you. Jesus said that God was wroth with the chief priests because they had ripped open so many prophets of God and that they should fear the ordinary people, which magnified him. Because Jesus did not observe the Sabbath, the chief of the priests cried out that God had not sent him. Jesus went to Nain in the second year of his prophetic ministry and saw the citizens carrying a dead man to the grave. They begged Jesus to raise the man, but Jesus feared greatly and turned to God, weeping. Jesus sighed, said that God had given him power over every infirmity, and drew near to the mother of the dead. 
After that, the boy revived, and all were filled with fear. Satan, after this, for fifteen days, every day, a horrible sign over the inhabitants of the earth shall come, the sun shall run its course in heaven without light, the moon shall be turned into blood, the stars shall fight among themselves like an army of enemies, and every plant and herb shall weep blood. The ninth day will bring hailstorms, the tenth day, lightning and thunder, the eleventh day, every river will run backwards, the twelfth day, every created thing will groan and cry, the fourteenth day, an earthquake will destroy everything, and the fifteenth day, God alone will remain alive. Jesus smote his face with his hands and head and said, Curse be everyone who shall insert into my sayings that I am the Son of God. God gave life to all the angels, who came like beasts circling the messenger of God. All the prophets went to kiss the hand of the messenger of God and committed themselves to his protection. God will give life to every created thing, the reprobates will be raised, and every creature will be afraid of Satan's appearance. The messenger of God will not be scared of such shapes. The messenger of God shall go to collect all the prophets and pray for the faithful, but everyone shall excuse himself for fear. God shall remind his messenger how he created all things for his love. When the messenger of God draws near to the throne, God shall open his mind to him, and the demons and reprobates with Satan shall weep so much that more water will flow from their eyes than is in the river Jordan. God spoke to his messenger, saying he was welcome to ask what he wanted and that he would obtain it all. The messenger asked God to be merciful and just. Everyone shall answer, There are with us three witnesses better than we are, O Lord, and God shall reply, Who are these three witnesses? Then Moses, David, and he who speaks to God shall say, the book that you gave to me is the first. The messenger of God shall open the book, and all the angels shall pass to the right hand of God, and the messenger of God shall sit next to the prophets. God shall call the angel Michael, who shall strike Satan one hundred thousand times with the sword of God and then cast Satan and his followers into the abyss. After the judgment, all the unbelievers and reprobates shall be called to review, and all creatures inferior to man shall arise testifying before God how they have served these men and outraged God and his animals. The prophets shall all arise, testifying against them. After all, having been examined, God will say to his messenger that all created things have been employed in their service and that they have disobeyed their Creator. It is most just that God has no mercy on them, and all the angels and prophets will ask for justice against them. While Jesus was speaking, the disciples wept bitterly. Jesus wept many tears, and John asked him how it was possible that the messenger of God would not pity reprobates that day. Jesus replied that the elect would rise again so perfectly and united to God that they would not conceive the slightest thought against God's justice in their minds. They would demand justice without mercy against those who despise his words. Hell is one place, but there are seven rooms or regions, and whoever goes to the deepest room shall suffer more significant punishment. The omnipotent God will cause Satan to suffer like you were in ten hundred thousand hells. Jesus told Peter to rest because his discourse had made him sad. Peter said he did not know what he was saying. David, our father, wept and said, Lightning and bolts and brimstone and a great tempest shall rain upon them. Jesus groaned and said, Truly, it is better never to have been formed than to suffer such cruel torments. Jesus said worldly tribulations are a delight compared to hell because earthly hardships come from man's hands. In contrast, the pain of suffering comes from the hands of devils, who are utterly without compassion. Jesus washed himself and his disciples according to the law of God written in the book of Moses, and then they prayed. The disciples saw Jesus sad but did not speak to him that day, but each stood terror-struck at his words. As God lives, man's neighbor is God, who has given him all he has including life itself, so that man may live well in this world, God may have praise, and man may have the glory of paradise. Jesus said that if one would live well, one should take an example from a merchant who locks up his shop and sells things only if they will make a profit and who does not sell items to their brother. After certain days, Jesus passed near a city of the Samaritans. The people would not let him enter the city, nor would they sell bread to his disciples, so James and John prayed to God to send down fire from heaven upon these people. Woe to those who call for vengeance, for on themselves it shall come, seeing that every man has in himself cause for the vengeance of God. If the blessed God who created this city now sustains it, why do you desire to destroy it? A sinner is of infirm mind when he persecutes a man, because no one would break their head for the sake of tearing the cloak of their enemy. 
the prophet David told those who wanted to kill Shermay to let him curse him, and God turned the curse into a blessing for David. When you are in tribulation, do not think of how much you have borne nor of him who afflicts you, but consider how much for your sins you are worthy to receive at the hand of the devils of hell. The impotent man answered that when the angel troubled the waters, he did not have anyone to put him into them, but while I was coming to the water, another stepped down before me and entered. Then Jesus lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Lord our God, have mercy upon this impotent man. Jesus warned his disciples to beware of those who bless them because they deceive them. Satan blessed our first parents, the sages of Egypt blessed Pharaoh, Goliath blessed the Philistines, and four hundred false prophets blessed Ahab. God says to remove the sacrifices made by the Israelites from his temple because they are an abomination to him. The time draws near when God will call the people not chosen and make a new covenant with them because they do not walk in his law and block the road for those who would walk in it. Those who think of the wages do not love the master, a shepherd prepares to defend his sheep when he sees the wolf coming, a hireling leaves the sheep and flees when he sees the wolf. Jesus said, O priests, scribes, and Pharisees, and high priests that hear my voice, I proclaim to you what God has said to you by his prophet Isaiah, I have nourished slaves and exalted them but they have despised me. Israel has slain prophets, contaminated prophecies, and violated the law of God, and now they ask the priests what punishment God will give them in hell. They should have asked the priests what they should do for true repentance. Jesus said that the doctors, scribes, Pharisees, and priests desired horses, fair clothing, and fish but did not desire to cultivate the earth or go fishing. God would give them a place where they would have every evil without any good. When Jesus saw their faith, he healed a demoniac who could neither speak nor see and commanded the spirit to depart from the man. The man spoke and saw, and everyone was filled with fear. Jesus went out of the temple and healed all the sick. The Roman soldiers stirred up the ordinary people by saying that Jesus was the God of Israel. Jesus said that God had not shown himself to Moses, Elijah, or any other prophet, so how can he show himself to this faithless generation? The eleven and Peter wept, and Jesus departed and went into Galilee. Jesus the prophet came to Nazareth, bringing the sick to him. A confident, wealthy man with palsy was carried up to the roof of the house where Jesus was, and when he heard that Jesus had forgiven his sins, he rose and was healed. The ordinary people besought Jesus to pray to God for the sick who stood outside, and Jesus laid his hands upon them, and they all received their health. At night, Jesus spoke secretly with his disciples saying Satan desired to sift them as wheat. He said that Judas would betray him, but soon he would reveal himself. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled, nor be you fearful. God will protect you, and the messenger of God will come to bring salvation to the world. Andrew asked Jesus about the coming of the Messiah. Jesus answered that he would not come in his time, but the gospel will be an old some years after you, and there will be scarcely thirty faithful. The moon shall minister to him in his boyhood, and when he grows up, he shall take her in his hands. He will put an end to the idolaters because Joshua and Moses, servants of God, put an end to many more. Jesus answered that the tempter lays wait for the man in four ways, with thoughts, with words and deeds using his servants, with false doctrine, and with false visions. If a man fears God, he will have victory over all. Our God promised to keep us with great love and he will cause his eye to rest upon us in our ways wherein we shall walk. However, it is necessary to prepare our souls for temptations, says the prophet Solomon. All scripture speaks against the evil thoughts with which sin is committed, for without thinking, it is impossible to sin. Satan plants sin in the heart, which is God's dwelling. The banker carefully considers his money and often turns it over in his hand. He is more prudent than the servants of God and will be judged on the last day for negligence and carelessness. Jesus answered that the right image and weight of thought are piety, the example of the holy ones and prophets, and the love of God. The enemy will bring impious ideas against your neighbor. Bartholomew asked Jesus what he ought to do to think little, and Jesus answered that he ought to exercise himself much and talk little and that the soul ought to be occupied with prayer. A man who paid ill went to the marketplace to find idle ones doing nothing and led them to his vineyard, but none who knew him went there. Satan is the one who pays well and goes in search of laborers. He sets to work those who stand in idleness, whoever they are, but much more so those who do not know him. A man had three vineyards, and the first vineyard only brought leaves. 
the second vineyard taught the third how to cultivate the vineyard, and the third bore much fruit. Still, Jesus answered that whoever drinks the water of this well will thirst again, but whoever drinks the water that I give will have no more thirst, and I will give to drink to them that have an appetite, insomuch that they come to eternal life. Jesus sighed and wept, saying that Judea would be condemned to hell for glorifying God in the temple of Solomon and living as though there were no God. He said that God would give His mercy to another city and accept true prayer with compassion. The woman answered that she looked for the Messiah, and He would teach her everything when He came. The disciples marveled that Jesus was speaking with a woman, but Jesus did not answer them. Jesus said that the mountain was white with corn and that today there is a great harvest to be reaped. The multitudes came to see him and begged him to stay with them for two days, and he healed all the sick and taught about the kingdom of God. After the midnight prayer, Jesus asked the disciples to make prayers, bowing their heads a hundred times and being revered, mighty, merciful, and always blessed. After praying, Jesus Ranja thanks God for giving us great mercy, for understanding this night, and for asking Jesus to teach them some precepts. The disciples trembled when Jesus spoke with intensity of spirit and asked him what they should do if a friend came to talk to them while they were praying. Jesus answered, Suffer him to wait and finish the prayer. The disciples answered that it was most accurate, but Jesus said that it was wrong to leave speaking with God to talk with man and that it was the desire of the devil that God should be forsaken for man. Jesus said that a man who works ill or talks ill and someone goes to correct him, that person serves God but a man who works well and someone goes to hinder him, that person serves the devil. Matthew asked Jesus if we should not be able to love anyone. Jesus answered that we should not hate anything save sin, and that we should not hate even Satan as a creature of God but instead as an enemy of God. Many friends' faults many of them defend them under earthly pretexts, or worse, invite and aid their friend to err. Such friends are enemies and slayers of the soul. When choosing a friend, Consider not his fine lineage, family, house, clothing, or person, nor his family, home, clothing, or deception. A true friend fears God, despises earthly things, loves good works, and hates his flesh. Such a friend is a gift from God and will be adorned with excellent favor by God. Thaddeus asked Jesus what to do with a friend worse than him. Jews answered that he should leave him if he were an offense. Simon called Peter and asked Jesus how he must do this, and Jesus answered, Put off fleshly prudence, and straightway you shall find the truth. He should cast away everything that may hinder him from serving God. Jesus told Peter to Jesus asked Peter if he had sinned against him. If he does not amend, go, and say so to the chubby, if he does not, count him as an afterthought. Peter was sold to correct his brother, as if he would be restored. If he got it fixed, he would receive mercy from God and his words would bear fruit. Peter asked Jesus how many times he must forgive his brother, and Jesus answered that he must forgive him seventy times a day. He also said that the prince is necessary for the state and that God gave Moses, Joshua, Samuel, David, and Solomon the sword to extrapolate iniquity. Jesus said that only the judge could condemn extra destruction and ought to convict the guilty. Peter asked Jesus how long he must wait for his brother to repent. Jesus answered that he must wait as long as God waits for him. Peter was sad, and the others were also sad because they did not understand the meaning of Jesus' words. Jesus answered that if they had sound understanding, they would not think to cut off their hearts for mercy to the sinner. The disciples asked Jesus about the part of his message they did not understand, and he answered that many who made prayer with fastings were damned. When the prayer was done, Jesus opened his mouth and said, Draw near. John, for today I will speak to you of all you have asked. Faith is a seal whereby God seals his elect, and the faithful, by faith, see all things better than one sees with his eyes. Satan seeks to bring fasting, prayer, almsgiving, and pilgrimages to nothing and incites unbelievers to it. Faith ought especially to be guarded with diligence, and the safest course is to abandon the why. Jesus answered that the wherefore is the gate of hell and that it is necessary to strengthen yourself with the words God has so said so is God done, and God so wills to live safely. To quiet the people, the high priest, Governor Pilate, and Herod rode in procession, and three armies assembled in Mizpeh, each of two hundred thousand men that bore swords. The governor and high priest spoke, and everyone quieted and embraced one another. At this time, the holy angel's word went to Mount Sinai with Jesus. 
Jesus kept the forty days there according to the holy angel's word, then drew near the river Jordan to go to Jerusalem. Small and great, everyone went and then drew near Jesus, leaving the city empty. The governor and the high priest rode forth to find Jesus leaving the city. Jesus lifted his hand in a token of silence and said, Truly, you have erred greatly, O Israelites, in calling me a man, your God. After a noise of weeping, Jesus spoke again. When the governor, Herod, and the priest arrived, everyone dismounted and circled Esus. Jesus drew near to the priest with reverence, but the priest wanted to bow himself down and worship Jesus. Jesus answered that what you say is true, for God works good in man, even as Satan works evil. But you say this because you are strangers to our law, for Moses made the water turn into blood, the dust into fleas, the dew into the storm, and the light into darkness. The governor, the priest, and the king prayed for Jesus to speak to the people from a lofty place, and Jesus went up on one of the twelve stones and stalked the people. Jesus said that God created all things by His word alone and that He is invisible and hidden from man's mind. He also said that the heaven of heavens cannot contain Him and that He has no need, for He eats not, sleeps not, and suffers not from any deficiency. Jesus turned towards the people and said, Repent, for it is written in the book of Moses, the covenant of God forever, that you may perceive your sin. The people raised their voices and prayed to Jesus for the safety of the holy city. Jesus answered that he was not the Messiah, but God had promised to send him. The priest asked Jesus to tell them. Them how the Messiah would come, and Jesus answered that he was not. Jesus answered that he was not the Messiah that all the tribes of the earth expected, that Satan would raise sedition when he left the world, and that God would send his messenger to destroy the idols and take away the dominion of Satan over men. Jesus was told by the priest, governor, and king that they would write to the sacred Roman senate to have none more call him God or Son of God. But Jesus said his faith would spread to the whole world. After the coming of the messenger of God, there shall not be other prophets, but a significant number of false prophets, at which I sorrow. They shall hide under the pretext of my gospel, and the world shall hate them. The multitude departed with the priest and the governor with Herod, having great disputations concerning Jesus and his doctrine. The Senate had compassion for Israel and decreed that no one should call Jesus God. When the more significant part of the crowd had departed, there remained about five thousand men without women and children who were weary by the journey, had been two days without bread, and had eaten raw herbs, therefore, they could not depart like the others. Jesus pitted them and gave them bread. Everyone put his hand to his eyes, saying, Am I awake, or do I dream? Then Jesus dismissed them, but seventy-two men would not leave him. Jesus drew the seventy-two and the twelve into a hollow part of the desert in Tyro, near Jordan, opened his mouth with a sigh, and said, This day we have seen great wickedness in Judea and Israel. When the people forgot God and boasted only of the temple, God raised his wrath by causing Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to take the holy city and burn it with the sacred temple. Innocent Job came close to loving his seven sons and three daughters too much, so God gave him into the hand of Satan, who deprived him of his sons and riches in one day and struck him with grievous sickness. Jesus said that if his disciples are asked how to show repentance, they should answer that a man loses a purse and turns back his whole body to find it. Jesus said that penitence is a reversal of the evil life, instead of delight, mourning must be practiced, laughter, weeping, reveling, fasting, sleeping, vigils, Leisure, activity, lust, purity, and storytelling must be turned into prayer and avarice into almsgiving. Jesus answered that repentance, more than anything else, must be done for God's pure love and that if a building's foundation is removed, it will fall into ruin. When a man has sinned, he has lost the foundation of his salvation, so it is necessary to begin from the foundation. According to nature, every animal mourns for the lost good and the sinner who will be genuinely penitent must have a great desire to punish himself for what he has done in opposition to his Creator. The sinner who holds to this manner of penitence will find mercy with God in proportion to the extent that he craves justice. The laughter of a sinner is a terrible blasphemy since this world is rightly called by our father David a veil of tears. The weeping of the sinner ought to be like that of a father who weeps over his son who is near death, but man does not cry over the soul from which the mercy of God has departed because of sin. Bartholomew asked Jesus what to do with a man who cannot weep because his heart is a stranger to crying. 
Jesus answered that not all those who shed tears weep and that some people weep more than a thousand of those who do shed tears. John asked Jesus how men lose themselves in weeping over things other than sin. Jesus answered that man has less reason to cry. If one breaks the watch of the soul, straightaway it is broken, for in doing so, a man breaks the fast of the soul and forgets God. But fasting the body and its watchings are not always possible for all people. Satan will use all his strength to get you to watch during the night and sleep afterwards when, by the commandment of God, you ought to be praying and listening to the Word of God. Peter answered that such a person ought not to be called a friend but a mocker. When a man gave his enemies the best wine, he gave his Lord the dregs, and when the Lord knew all, he beat and slew him in righteous indignation according to the laws of the world. Woe to the world, because with this and greater sin is its heart weighed down. After saying this, Jesus said that the disciples must seek the fruits of the field to sustain their lives, and that he would pray to God and await them with Barnabas. Then Jesus wept and revealed great secrets to Barnabas. Jesus answered that if men had not called him God, he would have been carried into paradise when he departed from the world, whereas now he will not go through until the judgment. Given that they would sell Barnabas for thirty pieces of money, his disciples must have been persecuting him. That infamy will be taken away when Muhammad comes because he has confessed the truth about the Messiah. The man who wrote the letter asked Jesus to tell him who the wretch was, but Jesus told him to hold his peace and tell his mother the truth. The disciples brought pine cones and dates to Jesus, and he ate with them after the midday prayer. The apostles and disciples feared that Jesus would soon depart from the world, but Jesus consoled them and told them to preach repentance in Israel. A citizen had a vineyard, a garden, and a fine fig tree in the midst of them. After three years, the owner came, and there was no fruit on the fig tree. Seeing every other tree bearing fruit there, he told his vines to cut down the wrong tree. The vine dresser pruned the fig plant's branches and put it in poor soil with stones, and the plant bore fruit. The owner waited, and the plant bore fruit. Jesus answered that God had cast out Satan and the first man from paradise because they bore no fruit of good works, and that God would cut down a man because he was bearing no fruit. The law of God says that man is too much good in this life, so he must suffer tribulation and be deprived of earthly goods to do good works. Therefore, God waits for the man to be penitent. Joe said that the poor should work, and Jesus answered that they must because they cannot do otherwise. However, since good must be independent of necessity and the sun and the other planets are unable to act in any other way due to God's precepts, they lack merit. The man was born naked and incapable of anything, so he is not the owner of anything but the dispenser. He will have to render an account thereof in that dreadful day, for lust makes a man like the brute beasts, and the enemy is of one's household. Jesus answered that lust is an unbridled desire for love that bursts the bounds of man's intellect and affections and that a man who lives in the city will do him harm because the town is a sponge that draws in every iniquity. A man should live in the city, defending himself against every assault and continually fearing treachery on the part of the citizens. However, he should bridle the eye, which is the origin of every carnal sin. When the prophet Elijah rebuked a blind man for grieving because he could not see Elijah, the Holy One of God, the blind man responded that it was not a sin to go see the Holy Prophet of God. Elijah greatly infuriated the blind man, who declared that he would no longer listen to him. Elijah answered that he would not give him sight. He no longer listens to him from God and says that if he had eyes, he would close them so as not to see him. Elijah told the blind man that he had sinned by looking lewdly at a woman in the temple of God. Elijah said that if you saw him, you would still desire to worship the creature rather than the Creator. He noted that many desire to see him but despise his words so it would be better for them if they had no eyes. Jesus said that Israel was desirous of establishing idolatry by holding him for God and that many despised his teaching, saying that he could make himself Lord of all Judea if he confessed himself to be God. If the eye is not guarded, O oh Andrew, I tell you that it is impossible not to fall headlong into lust. Therefore, Jeremiah the prophet weeps vehemently, and David, our father, prays with the greatest longing to God, our Lord that he might not behold vanity. When a man beholds a thing and forgets God, who has made it for him, he sins against God by ingratitude. If a man puts a bridle on his eyes, he will be lord of the senses, which cannot desire what is not presented. The penitent must turn storytelling into prayer because in every idle word, man sins, and God blots out sin because of prayer.
prayer is the advocate of the soul, the medicine of the soul, the defense of the heart, the weapon of faith, and the salt of the flesh. A man without prayer can no more be a man of good works than a dumb man can plead his cause to a blind one or a fistula can be healed without unguent. Woe to those who jest and talk vainly, for our God has made them an abomination. If anyone would do penance, he must give out his words at the price of gold. Jesus answered that no one would buy a man's words at the price of gold and that he would become covetous if he tried penance, he said the penitent should think he was casting forth gold when he talked. Avarice must be channeled into almsgiving, for the greedy man has hell for his end, for it is impossible for the cheap to possess any good in paradise, for he makes himself God over the riches God has given him. Avarice is a thirst of the senses that surrounds itself with temporal things because it cannot delight itself in God, who is hidden from it. The sinner converts to God, who gives him the grace to repent. Then he lifted his hands and prayed, saying, Lord God Almighty and merciful, who in mercy has created us, give us the rank of men, your servants, and with the faith of your true messenger, we thank you for all your benefits. When it was early on Friday morning, Jesus assembled his disciples and said to them, Let us sit down, for even as on this day God created man of the clay of the earth, and then explained that man is a vessel that God made of earth, air, water, and fire. God created man and put light into his heart through reason. As a result of sin, man's senses lost their enjoyment of life and his soul lost its beauty, necessitating the need for God's mercy to enlighten him so that he could distinguish between good and evil and find true joy. Jesus replied that man as man avails nothing to convert man to repentance, but man as a means which God uses converts man, so one ought to listen to every man. Jesus answered in a parable, A man goes fishing with a net but throws away the bad fish. Only the truth bears fruit in eternal life. Jesus answered that few are saved in such a time because men do not consider their end to be God. Therefore, he said, feel love towards God, pity towards one's neighbor, and hatred towards oneself. When the senses would faint to acquire a thing or tenaciously keep it, reason must say, such a thing will have its end. Therefore, it behoves one to love and support that which will not have an end and to change avarice into alms, distributing rightly what a man has acquired wrongly. Barnabas asked Jesus how long the penitence should last. Jesus replied that as long as a man is in a state of sin, he should always repent and do penance for it. Jesus sent his disciples through the region of Israel, healing every sort of sickness and confirming the words of Jesus that God is one and Jesus is a prophet of God. But the priests and the scribes plotted against Jesus secretly. The disciples returned to Jesus, who received them as a father receives his sons. Jesus said to them, God forgive you, O brethren, because you have sinned in saying, We have healed, seeing it is God that has done all. The things of this world do not cause us to praise ourselves in our hearts, much less an olive scythe, since all the creatures inferior to man fight against us. Many have died of pestilence, famine, or because they have been devoured by wild beasts, bitten by serpents, or choked on food. A man who praises himself, having so much to weigh him down and being labored over and waited for by all the creatures in every place, angers God, his helper, who would pardon Satan if he knew his misery and asked mercy of his Creator. Two men came to the temple to pray, a Pharisee and a publican. The publican bowed down to the earth and beat his breast, but the Pharisee went down from the temple worse than the publican because God rejected him. The axe cannot boast of having cut down a forest where a man has made a garden, and neither can you. Because you have exalted yourself above God, you will be humiliated beneath the feet of Satan, who waits for you. Jesus prayed, lifted his hands to the Lord, and made many sick people whole. The priests and scribes hated Jesus and reported him to the Roman soldiers, but they found no way to kill him. Mary entered the house of Simon and wiped Jesus' feet with her hair, then washed his feet with her tears and anointed them with precious ointment. Simon was scandalized and asked Jesus to speak to him. Jesus said a man had two debtors, one owed fifty pence and the other five hundred pence. The man who had forgiven the more outstanding debt would love his creditor most, and God healed the woman's body and soul. After the nightly prayer, Jesus' disciples asked him how they should escape pride. Jesus answered that a poor man should be invited to a prince's house to eat bread and that a disciple should not seek to have the most honorable place at the table. The disciples trembled with fear at the words of Jesus, and he said that they should fear God and that he would not cast us into the abyss for our pride. A man ought to bear himself with the most profound humility, knowing his vileness and the greatness of God.
John ate with Herod and did not sin because of God's disposition. Live as John lived, and you will be free from all pride. Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee when many people gathered around him. He went into a little boat, Jesus answered that everyone must go to hell, but that the holy ones and prophets of God shall go there. Behold, the wicked are not suffering any punishment, and the righteous are only suffering fear. And the messenger of God shall go there to behold hell. After those years, the angel Gabriel will come into hell and ask Muhammad where his promises are. Muhammad will then speak to God and ask him to remember his promise concerning those who have received his faith. Chap has promised God that people in hell had been there for 70,000 years. God's favorite people in hell took them out and led them into paradise. The city's men went to Jesus, asking for mercy because this year the worms had bitten them and they would not receive any bread from their land. Jesus answered that Elijah and David endured well persecuted, but how shall these little ones fare? After fasting for nineteen days, the disciples found fields and hills covered with ripe corn. Jesus thanked God and told them to gather the bread that God had given. Jesus said that he must depart from the world and that those who know how to reach a suitable hostelry yet desire to abide on the miry road are more unhappy. A man who has no hope of receiving anything from the Romans because they have a law that is foreign to him is not willing to leave his own country with all that he has, never to return, and go to live in Rome. The death of the holy is precious in the sight of the Lord because they die well and are rare. Whenever a man begins anything, he paints his desired conclusion. How would the work end if a man sewing cloth threaded beams instead of thread in the needle? Indeed, he would work in vain and be despised by his neighbors. Jesus wept and said that people who follow the flesh and the world are furious and cruel enemies of themselves. Judas, the traitor, lost hope of becoming influential when he saw that Jesus had fled. He gave Jesus up to the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees to do good. The scribes and Pharisees counseled with the high priest about how they would fare under a king who would reform the worship of God after the ancient custom. One Sabbath morning, Jesus came to Nazareth, and a publican named Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore to see Jesus. When Jesus passed by, Zacchaeus came down and received him with gladness. The Pharisees murmured, saying that Jesus had gone in to eat with publicans and sinners. Jesus answered that he was coming to heal the sick. God sends prophets and servants into the world so sinners may repent, not for the sake of the resource, they do not need repentance. Enoch, a friend of God, was transgender and did not need advice, and he abided there until the judgment. Men began to seek God, their Creator, and the name Pharisee was given to them to deride good men. The Canaanites ridiculed the Pharisees because they derided them for forsaking cities and their goods to serve God. Jesus said that all the saints and prophets of God were Pharisees, not in every deed. Twelve mountains were present during Elijah's time, despite 17,000 Pharisees living there. Now, there are over a hundred Pharisees, and may it please God that out of every thousand there be one elect. The Pharisees were confused when they heard the name of the book of Elijah because they knew that no one observed such doctrine. Jesus said that if they were true, the Pharisees would forsake all other business to attend to this for the Pharisees seek God alone. If you wish to do good works, attend to yourself, live better than others, seek God, flee the conversation yourself once every thirty days, end your time as one draws his breath, and hate no one save yourself. In prayer, let them stand in fear as if they were at the judgment to come, and do this in the service of God with the law that God has given them through Moses. Zacchaeus gave for times as much to Jesus as he had received by usury. Jesus said that many publicans, harlots, and sinners would go into the kingdom of God, but those who account themselves righteous would go into eternal flames. A poor man went to his father and said he had sinned against him. His father saw him coming, was moved to compassion, and embraced and kissed him. The elder son came home and saw they were making merry, but they were immensely angry and would not go into the house. His father told him that his brother had come home and they should rejoice but the elder son refused to eat at the table of fornicators. When Jesus heard that the Pharisees had taken counsel with the high priest against him, he said that he did not fear them but rather feared God. Today's Pharisees are not Pharisees and only cover their wickedness with the profession and garb of religion. In the time of Elijah, more than 10,000 prophets who were true Pharisees were slain in one year. The elder asked the younger how long he had dwelt here, 
and the younger answered that God was now king of Israel because the idolaters were not kings, but persecutors forsaking. The elder perceived that the younger was more perfect than he was, so he invited the younger to read the Psalms of David and learn from them. When the elder Pharisee found the younger Pharisee, he asked why he had not returned to any dwelling. The younger answered that he had not learned well what the elder said. The elder said that the younger brother despises knowledge, but the younger replied that he ought to observe the commandments of God before learning more. The elder asked the younger where he learned this doctrine, and the younger answered that God looks not at time but at the heart. The simple folk, not knowing how to read, do what they see the Pharisees do because they hold them as holy. However, the faithful Pharisee is the human nature's oil, a living book, and salt that does not permit sin and light to putrefy human flesh. Jesus came to Jerusalem, and the soldiers tried to convince him to convert them to his faith. Jesus said that his life was a continual warfare upon the earth. Jesus answered that if he had created them as our God had created them, he would seek to convert them. The soldiers said the honor these people paid him must have taken away their understanding. Jesus answered the soldiers that if their gods were omnipotent, they could create one fly, if not, he would not worship them. The soldiers were dismayed at hearing it, if they rolled out of the temple without anyone touching them. The priests and Pharisees murmured among themselves and said that Jesus had the wisdom of Baal, and Ashtaroth had done this in the tundra power of Satan. Jesus opened his mouth and said that this sin would never be forgiven. A scribe asked Jesus how robbery filled the world with sin. Jesus answered that whoever does not know the goods cannot understand the robbers, and whoever does not know what they are doing is guilty of greater evil than the others. Jesus said that all things created belong to the Creator, and whoever takes time and spends it contrary to God's will is a robber. He said that whoever sin steals time, God's will, and his own life and gives them to Satan, the enemy of God. The Pharisees were angry at hearing Jesus' speech, but they could not condemn it. A doctor came to Jesus and asked him why God did not grant corn and fruit to his fathers. Jesus answered that the man called him good, but he was not good and erred in asking why God had not done according to his brain. He said that God conformed himself to us so that we might depend on the Creator. The blind do not see clearly because they cannot draw light out of the darkness. If man had not sinned, we would not have known the mercy of God and his righteousness. The high priest sent two senior priests to Jesus. They drew near to him and asked him why men ate corn and fruit. Jesus answered that God had allowed it and that man had more power than God. Jesus answered that he would walk in the middle of the road over the mountain because God did not need man and created man free so that he might know that God did not need him. God created man free so that he might love his Creator more and know his bounty. However, God left man free by his compensation to resist evil, do good, and work the mercy of God and his righteousness in him. The man who was born blind responded that neither Abraham nor Moses nor any other prophet had appeared to me in a dream and healed me, instead, a man by the name of Jesus made clay out of earth with his saliva, applied it to his eyes, and sent him to the pool of Siloam to wash. The Pharisees did not believe the blind man, so they sent for his father and mother, who answered that he was indeed their son. The high priest then asked how this happened to the blind man. The father and mother of the man born blind replied that they knew he was born blind but how he received the light they did not know. The high priest asked the man born blind to speak the truth. The high priest told the man born blind to give glory to God and speak the truth, but the man born blind answered that he did not know whether he was a sinner and that God would not listen to sinners. The Pharisees then reviled him and cast him out of the synagogue. The man born blind went to find Jesus, who comforted him in that, God blessed him because he had spoken. God blessed him and his prophet against the friends of the world. This world loves God because, by nature, they long after God, and according to their hearts, everyone longs after an infinite good without any evil, and this is God alone. The disciples asked Jesus why he was speaking in such great words, and Jesus answered that they did not understand because they did not know what was said. If the high priests and Pharisees persecuted me because the people of Israel had called me God, they would be doing a thing pleasing to God, but because they hate me and desire my death, God has made them an abomination. Satan sought to turn the angels away from God. As a result, God rejected him. Jesus answered Barnabas that he must recite all that occurred briefly so we may see the truth. Ahab said there was only one prophet, and he was evil, for he consistently predicted evil concerning Ahab. Jehoshaphat sent for Micaiah, 
and he spoke in the name of God, and Ahab went up against the Ammonites. Micaiah answered that the people of Israel would prosper and come down even more prosperously. As a true prophet of God, the false prophet broke off the fetters from his feet. God told Micaiah and old Micaiah to put a lie into his false prophet's mouth so that he would go up against Ammon and the Pharisees say that the reprobate cannot become elect, but God says that if the righteous forsake their righteousness and do abominations, they will perish, and God will not remember their character. The Pharisees' doctrine contradicts God altogether. Andrew asked Jesus how God could say he would have mercy on whomever he wanted to and harden whomever he wanted to. Jesus answered that God said it so men would not believe in other gods. Moses was close to losing his life because Pharaoh had afflicted the people and tried to bring their salvation to naught by destroying all the male children in Israel. God wills to pursue man's free will and will not forsake the creature with omnipotence. If your mind does not rest content in this, I will disclose a why. While water extinguishes fire and earth flees from the air, they are united in man and preserved harmoniously. If you do not know this, all men cannot understand it. Isaiah, the prophet of God, exclaimed that God was a hidden God and that the manner of predestination was not manifest to men but that the fact was actual, as he had told them. The disciples said, God, heaven, to Jesus, because the man never spoke as you talk. Jesus answered that a book, like a clear mirror, came down into his heart, and all that he said came forth from that book. David, the prophet of God, saw the delights of paradise, but he did not see them with human eyes because God took his soul to himself, and thus, united with God, he saw them in a divine way. The world in the summertime is beautiful, and the peasant makes the valleys and mountains resound with his singing. Lift your heart to paradise, where all things are fruitful, with fruits proportionate to the one who has cultivated them. God says that the man who faithfully serves him will be rewarded as if he were God, and that he faithfully gives a gift to the man who faithfully serves him. Jesus said that abundance faithfully serves as the quantity of this world and that the delights of heaven will be more precious than all the delights of the princes of this world. Peter asked Jesus if his body would enter paradise, and Jesus answered that a Sadducee would deny his body and soul entrance into heaven and all the ministry of angels in this world. God will purify our flesh so that it will possess none of the properties it has now and will reduce it to a condition similar to Adam's before he sinned. The body with a sense of man serves God, but the soul only sees and commands the service because the soul eats no bread, fasts not, walks not, feels not cold and heat, falls not sick, and is not slain. The soul is immortal. God promises mercy to the sinner, saying he will not remember his iniquities forever. The body will eat the meat of paradise, and it will not be voided in uncleanness because it will be incorruptible, impassable, immortal, and free from every misery. God says that his servants will feast joyfully and enjoy the sound of harps and organs, but his enemies will be cast away and die in misery. Jesus asked his disciples why God spoke plainly about the four rivers of precious liquor in paradise with so many fruits. He said that the glory of heaven was for the body, the mind, and the sense of God. Bartholomew asked Jesus if paradise would be equal for every man. Jesus answered that it would not be identical, for God is just, and everyone would be content because there would be no envy. Jesus answered that the world where sinners dwell has the sun, moon, and stars for their benefit and their gladness, but the house where his faithful dwell shall be better, for I, their God, am the son of paradise. Bartholomew asked Jesus about paradise, and Jesus answered that it is so great that no man can measure it. Paradise is more significant than all the earth and all the heavens together, just as all the world is more significant than a grain of sand. A scribe came to Jesus on Sunman's porch and asked him about a passage of scripture that he could not understand. Jesus answered that man could not merit God, which was the reason for his doubt. The scribe was amazed when Jesus said that whoever gives for the love of God will receive a hundredfold. Then he asked Jesus if he could give someone a decayed vine leaf instead of a hundred pieces of gold. Jesus answered that man was created out of nothing and that he had spent it all on sin. Because of this, he had nothing to give to God but works corrupted by sin, and he merited no reward or betterment. God created man perfect, gave him the whole world, two angels to guard him, sent him the prophets, granted him the law, granted him the faith, and every moment he delivers him from Satan, he is fain to give him paradise, no more, God wills to give himself to man. Accordingly, this passage implies that God can say and do whatever pleases him. Therefore, when he says to Abraham, 
I will be your great reward, Abraham can't say, God is my reward, but God is my gift and my debt. If God pardons you, rewards you, and glorifies you, then punish you as much as all the reprobate shall suffer, and punish you now and without end because every one of them would have served God more faithfully if they had received as much as you have. The scribe thanked Jesus and said he would give meat to him and his disciples if Jesus called him brother or Lord. While they sat at the table, the scribe asked Jesus about true humility. Jesus replied that he who becomes not as a little child shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus answered that a man has to become as humble as a little child and that a little child will respond my father to all questions. If you ask a little boy why he fell, he will answer that he was trying to run, but his father left him for a bit of space, and the boy fell. False humility is a mist from hell that darkens the understanding of the soul and causes a man to ascribe to himself what he ought to explain to God. Jesus answered that it is not time that has done this, but rather the wicked world, because by companying with the world, with the evil manners in each time, men become bad. The Pharisees of the present day avoid every good deed and every holy example. Haggai was fifteen years old when he went to serve Obadiah the prophet. Obadiah often presented him with clothing and delicate food. Still, Haggai always returned the messenger, saying he should not receive such things because he was good for nothing and only committed sins. When Obadiah desired to teach anyone how to pray, he called Haggai and said, Recite your prayer here so that everyone may hear your words. Haggai would say, Lord God of Israel, with mercy, look upon your servant, who calls upon you. The excellent scribe wept as he said this and said that Hosea, prince of the tribe of Naphtali, sold his birthright and gave it to people experiencing poverty and was soon left with only two garments. Hosea had the book of Moses, which he read with the greatest earnestness. O Haggai asked him who had taken away all he had, and Hosea replied, the book of Moses. Hosea saw robbers strip a helpless man and leave him naked. Haggai thought he was sick, so he went with two disciples to find him and gave him another tunic. A young man wept after seeing Hosea read the book of Moses and asked for a book. Hosea gave him the book, and the man accepted it. A disciple of Haggai went to visit Hosea, and a Haggai disciple saw Hosea answer that the book of Moses had taken away his book and went to Haggai, who said that Hosea had gone mad. The Syrian robbers took the son of a poor widow who lived hard by Mount Carmel and sold Hosea to a man who took him to Jerusalem, where he had an abode, not knowing Hosea. The prophet Haggai was afflicted when he heard that Hosea had been taken as a slave to Jerusalem. Haggai recognized Hosea and asked him why he had forsaken his father. Hosea answered that the book of Moses had sold him, and Haggai remained beside himself, praying to God that it would not sell him too. Haggai went with Hosea to his master's house, and the master kissed Haggai's hand and gave Hosea his freedom after hearing all that had passed. Jesus said the sun should stand still and not move for twelve hours, to the terror of all Jerusalem and Judea. As God lives, in whose presence my soul stands, the book of Moses and David has been corrupted by human traditions of false Pharisees and doctors. Therefore, God has not given his word to me. Woe to the faithless generation, for upon them shall come the blood of every prophet and righteous man, with the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom they slew between the temple and the altar. The scribe answered that he feared telling Jesus that Isaac was the promise of the Messiah to Abraham, but Jesus said that he should not fear losing his life because he would not lose his faith or eternal life. Jesus answered that people should not respect others, the world, brothers, or angels when offended. Isaac was the father of the Messiah and Isaac was the father of the Messiah's messenger, according to an old book that Moses and Joshua, two of God's servants and prophets, had written. Mary, who wept at Jesus' feet, entered the house of Nicodemus and cried because her brother and sister were sick and in peril of death. Jesus said that in the faith of the Messiah, God should give salvation to men, and without it, none would be saved. Jesus answered the woman and said to go to her brother's house and await him, for I will come to heal him. The woman went and found that her brother had died that day. Jesus abdicated for two days in the house of Nicodemus, and on the third day, he departed for Bethany. Mary, weeping for four days, found Jesus and cried to him that her brother was not dead but sleeping and that he would rise before the day of judgment. At Lazarus' death, many Pharisees followed Martha, who wept and said that Jesus would have saved her brother if he had been here. The Pharisees asked Jesus why he allowed Lazarus to die after saying he should not die. 
Jesus said that he would sleep in like manner, that he would be speedily awakened, and that he would lift his hands to heaven. Many believed in Jesus because of the miracle of Lazarus, and many became Nazarenes through the word of God. The scribes and Pharisees took counsel with the high priest to slay Lazarus, but Jesus entered Bethany into the house of Lazarus, and Martha, with Mary, ministered to him. The disciples went and found all that Jesus had told them, and they brought the ass and the colt, and Jesus rode on them. The men of Jerusalem went to see him. The Pharisees rebuked Jesus for speaking about the stones crying out against the unbelief of malignant sinners, but the rocks cried out with a great noise, and the men spread their garments under the feet of Jesus. The scribes and Pharisees brought to Jesus a woman taken in adultery, and he stooped down and made a mirror on the ground wherein everyone saw his iniquities. He said, If there is anything within you, let him be the first to stone her. Jesus saw the woman and asked her, Where are they that condemned you? The woman answered, They are departed. Jesus said, Blessed be God. The Pharisees asked Jesus who the physician was more loved by, those who had never had any sickness or those whom the physician had healed of grievous diseases. The Pharisees responded that they were sinners and that God would understand them, to which Jesus responded that the sinner who repented loved the physician more due to God's great mercy. Jesus said that they were doubly righteous and unrighteous because they denied their sin and called themselves honest, and they departed, leaving Jesus with his disciples in peace. O city of confusion! I have sent my servant to convert you to your heart, but you have forgotten all that I did upon Egypt and upon you, O Israel. I will bring princes and an army to you, and your pride shall fall into hell. Jezid said that there were other sick folks, and those with their souls sound were fewer than those who were ill. The men wept when they heard of the wrath of God upon Jerusalem and prayed for mercy, but Jesus said that unless Jerusalem mourned for her sins and did penance, walking in his ways, his fury would not be appeased. While Jesus was supping with his disciples in the house of Simon the leper, Mary, the sister of Lazarus, entered the house and poured ointment over the head and garment of Jesus. Judas, the traitor, was fain to hinder Mary from doing such a work, but Jesus said to let her be. Jesus visited the temple with many people, and the high priest questioned him. Jesus answered that he had not forgotten his confession that he was neither God, the Son of God, nor the Messiah. Aureus answered the high priest that he had not come to the temple to make himself king of Israel but to save it from the people. The high priest said he had the devil at his back because he was a Samaritan and had no respect for the priests. Jesus answered that he had not the devil at his back but sought to cast out the devil. Therefore, the devil stirred up the world against him, but Jesus told them who had the devil at their back. Even though men are all of one material, they are different because of the work of the man. If you were a member of the body in which I am incorporated as God lives, you would help me work according to my head. Jesus answered that the son of Abraham was Ishmael, from whom one descended. The Messiah promised to Aham that in him the tribes of the earth would be. The high priest was wroth and cried out to stone Jesus for speaking blasphemy against Moses and the law of God. Nicodemus counseled Jesus to go beyond the brook Cedron with some of his disciples and tarry there until the hatred of the priests was passed. Jesus did, desiring only to have the twelve first called apostles with him. While the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus, was standing in prayer, the angel Gabriel visited her and narrated the persecution of her son. Mary, weeping, departed from Nazareth and came to Jerusalem to seek her son. The high priest ascended on high and said that Jesus had deceived the whole world with his diabolical art and that Israel would be polluted if he was not removed from the world, and God would give us to the nations. The high priest spoke to Herod and the governor, saying that if they killed Jesus, they would be against the decree of Caesar. How would the matter go if they allowed Jesus to die? How would the case go if he made himself known and made friends with Herod, and they joined together for the death of Jesus? They sent soldiers to search for Jesus throughout Jerusalem. Jesus comforted his disciples by saying that he must depart from the world and that they should not be sad about his welfare. They should also remember the words that God spoke to them through his mouth. Then, lifting his hands to the Lord, he prayed, saying that he wanted to keep his children from evil so they could bear witness against the world and the house of Israel that had corrupted his testament. God, the mighty and jealous, curses eternally everyone that corrupts the gospel that he gave his Son, shows mercy to a multitude upon those who hear him and his compassion upon those who have understanding upon that who has mercy upon those who the Savior, save those whom you have given me, and grant me a place in your congregation on the day of judgment, so that Satan may not boast against you. 
Jesus said to God, Lord, have mercy on the world and send speedily your messenger, that Satan your enemy may lose his empire. And they answered, weeping, so be it, Lord, great and merciful. Nicodemus sent a lamb to the garden for Jesus and his disciples, and Jesus rejoiced in spirit, saying, Blessed be your holy name, O Lord, and turning to Judas, he said, Go and do what you must do. Jesus sent Judas to buy something for the day of the Passover, but he knew that Judas was betraying him, so he spoke these words to depart from the world. After eating, he took a towel and girded his loins, and, girding his disciple, he washed us and said that one of the disciples would betray him and that he would be sold like a sheep. Judas stated that he would be the one to betray Jesus, and the devil came upon his back, and he went forth from the house. Judas went to the high priest and begged for Jesus, and the high priest gave him thirty pieces of gold. The governor and Herod gave him a legion of soldiers, and they went out of Jerusalem with torches and lanterns. When the soldiers with Judas drew near to the place where Jesus was, Jesus withdrew into the house in fear. God commanded his ministers to take Jesus out of the world. The soldiers entered, laid their hands on Judas, and as they said this, the Alebes aided themselves, and Jay, who was wrapped in a linen cloth, fled naked. The soldiers lost their patience and flouted Judas, leading him with fury into Jerusalem. They bound his eyes with a bandage and mocked him, saying, Jesus, the prophet of the Nazarenes, tell us who smote you. The high priest and the Pharisees sought false witness against Judas, believing him to be Jesus. Judas answered nothing to the point, and the high priest adjourned him by the living God of Israel that he would tell him the truth. Judas Iscariot was feigning to be mad to escape punishment, but the high priest's servants smote him with buffetings and kicks and dressed him as a juggler so that the chief priests, Pharisees, and elders of the people would take pleasure in seeing him so treated. The governor, thinking that Judas was Jesus, made him enter his chamber and spoke to him, asking him for what cause the chief priests and the people had given him into his hands. Judas answered that he would slay an innocent person if he put him to death, and he would kill an innocent person. He marveled greatly and sought to set the man at liberty. However, if the man were Jesus and denied that he was, it would be impious to slay a madman. The chief priests, elders, scribes, and Pharisees cried out with shouts, and Pilate, to rid himself of such a case, said, Take him to Herod, and so they took Jesus to Herod. Accordingly, they led Judas to Herod, who mocked him and sent him back to Pilate because the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees had given him a scribe's amount. The governor feigned that it amounted to setting Judas at liberty. His slaves scourged Judas and scourged Judas to die under the scourges, instead, they crowned him with a crown of thorns and made him sit in a high place. The soldiers mocked Jesus and smote him, saying he should pay his mock servants. The chief priest scribes gave a gift to Pilate, who condemned Judas and two robbers to death. Judas was crucified naked at Mount Calvary, where they used to hang malefactors, and his disciples and believers believed he was Jesus. However, those who stood firm in the whole of Jesus were so sorrowful and sorrowed that they forgot what Jesus had said. The disciples who did not fear God stole the body of Judas and hid it spreading a report that Jesus rose again, and so there arose a great persecution, many were stoned, beaten, and banished from the land because they could not hold their peace. The virgin returned to Jerusalem with those who wrote, James and John, on the day the decree of the high priest went forth. The angels that were guardians of Mary ascended to the third heaven, where Jesus was, and recounted everything to him. Jesus came to Mary the virgin with her two sisters, Martha and Mary Magdalene, Lazarus and him who writes, and John, James, and Peter. They all believed that Jesus was dead, but Jesus raised them all from the ground. Jesus replied to his mother that he had not been dead and prayed for the four angels to manifest themselves so his mother and her companions could see and hear them speak. The angels narrated to the virgin how God had sent for Jesus and transformed Judas. Jesus claimed that God punished his mother and disciples for showing him earthly love and predicted that after Judas died, men in this world would mock him until the arrival of Muhammad, the messenger of God, who would reveal this deception to those who uphold God's law. Jesus turned to the man who wrote his gospel and said, Write about all that has happened through my dwelling in the world and about what has befallen Judas. The man who wrote the gospel said he would do so if God would. Jesus told his disciples to get to the old Mount of Olives with his mother and at midday, he came with a great multitude of angels praising God. 
They were horrified, but Jesus comforted them and said, Do not be afraid, I am your master. For angels then carried Jesus up into heaven after he prayed for the salvation of the faithful and the conversion of sinners. Following Jesus' departure, the disciples dispersed throughout Israel and the rest of the world, and falsehood persecuted truth. Certain evil men, pretending to be disciples, preached that Jesus